and they're dragging a chair, walking the dog at 10.30 at night. <laughs> I can't make this shit up. <laughs> do it live, right? I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. Oh. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Like, I'm, you can see, I'm, I'm not tracking them by hand or anything. I'm not clicking anything. Uh, that's my mouse sitting there. So pretty cool that it just automatically tracks people and zooms in on them. I'm just curious to see if it'll jump to the guy once it loses her. Yeah, if you get bored, you know, I, I, this is entertaining for me even when I'm re recording this. Uh, no, it went to the, uh, don't, don't stop in the mailbox. So I wanted to share with you a pretty awesome camera that I did pick up. And yeah, I did purchase this with my own funds, which of course is funded by you clicking and doing the things with all the videos. So totally unbiased on this review, but it's a pretty badass camera. It's a camera that I was finally able to fix an area that, because I live on the corner and just the corner of the house is the perfect area because I can capture the whole side yard and the entire front yard and I really wanted a great zoom. Well, that's where it landed on the camera by Empire Tech. It's a 25X zoom. Yeah, it's stupid crazy on what you can zoom into. Probably a little too much, but can you have too much zoom? Now, being Empire Tech, I will say that I do like his support, and now if you've been around some of the forums and whatnot, that he does support and back up all of his cameras if you have an issue and keeps up with firmware updates, etc. And they are Dawa based, so yeah, you don't have any of the codec issues that you see with some of the other cameras. So you can use it with Frigate or BI, which is Blue Iris, several other software NVRs. You can set the codecs to H.264, H.265. It's totally how you want to use the camera. Pretty awesome there, but I will tell you the camera is expensive. You're going to pay anywhere from, depending if you catch it on sales, on AliExpress or maybe eBay or Amazon. Of course, I'll leave all the links down below where you can pick up yours. It's going to be like $375, the cheapest I've seen it. If not more, you may see it $400, etc. And you'll be going, wow, yeah, that's an expensive camera. But this is, they, they call it a mini PTZ. And it has an awesome feature, which I've probably already shown because that way you just don't look at my ugly mug, is all of the movements, uh, tracking the people and whether you want to track cars and everything. I'm not moving the camera. This, I put all the clips that you're going to see and through the various parts of this video, I pulled all of those from my software NVR and it was all done by the camera itself. It tracks, it zooms in, it's damn smooth. Now it's not always perfect. I still wish that we had an ability to tweak the sit time where I guess if someone just stands there totally still for a little bit, it kind of thinks that they're gone. I wish we had the ability to, you know, sit there longer and make sure, but they, maybe this could be a firmware update later to in a time. The problem I ran into trying to mount up, whether it be the big honking Amcrest one I've done or even some of the real link ones, they all want to do a wall mount. And I have some wooden eaves. It's very simple to hang a camera from the eave. And especially being PTZ, you're hanging down. You've got no wall really in the way and you can turn and look, you know, 360. Well, besides the brick corner. So the Eve was pretty awesome to be able to mount stuff. And then I've got no wires and it's not crazy heavy for a PTZ and it's stupid fast. So I did say this is Dawa based. Yeah, it's rebranded by Empire Tech. Definitely no issues there, but I'm going to use the official specs out on their website. So it does have that starlight. Sensor, it is a 1 slash 2.8 inch sensor, so it's a little bit larger than you'll see of some of those nice color night vision ones. So you're not going to get that really great color night vision like we've seen in that 4K color turret that we did previously. It's pretty decent in the lighting I have on the front of the house. 
Um, I know it does show the IR distance. I have not really tested it with the IR. Maybe I'll turn that on and grab some stuff during the night here. I think mine's set just in day mode currently. Now, it does have all this other stuff to it, the face detection, perimeter protection, auto tracking, etc. It is only 4 megapixel, but think about it. It's 25x zoom. And yeah, that's 25x, not digital zoom. That's actual lens move out and pick up 25x zoom. So yeah, do you really need 4K when you can just zoom and go see it yourself? So I won't bore you with all the numbers or the specs and everything, but here's all the stupid, crazy codec settings that you can do. Yes, it does include the Substream 2 of 720p that we love to use in several other software MVRs. Pretty cool stuff there. You can set all your things, do all the deal right here on the GUI, which we're going to jump to in a little bit. There's no having to be limited like some manufacturers <clears throat> real link that only lets you change certain codecs. That's definitely not the case here with Daiwa cameras. You can tweak them to your heart's content there. So this does support, of course, on VIF events, RTSP, the whole nine yards, and it should integrate straight into Home Assistant because it is Daiwa based. Now, one thing I did want to talk about, I've seen some incorrect information on some uh, websites or forums. They talk about you should use Internet Explorer. No. Check this out. Look, here's the browser. iOS 10, Firefox, Chrome, IE 9. If you want to use it with IE and you still have IE, go right ahead. I did notice I, I had issues with drawing the lines for the they call it the, the trip line, trip wire. I had an issue on Chrome, but I was able to do it fine in Firefox. It wouldn't let me click more than two or three times on Chrome, but Firefox let me do it without any issue. It also is supported also by their DMSS and DSS Pro. That's their software application for if you want to use it on your phone. And also you can use it on your computer instead of using the web GUIs. Now, I know a lot of people are going to ask, does it do audio? Yes, it does audio, but think of it. There's those motors that are inside. They, they are pretty quick. They're not really that loud, but if you want audio, you want to do it off board. Not going to be on the unit itself. You'll have to do an external mic. And if you look for the unboxing part of this, I show some of the wiring and you can do tie in some of the audio IOs and these, that's these ports here. And of course, it is PoE, but it's PoE plus. So that's 802.3 AT. Uses a little more wattage because those quick PTZ motors. So do keep that in mind. So the GUI is pretty much similar in some of the other cameras. If you use PTZ, you'll get the PTZ control over here. And basically, I don't use that that much. I just let it do the auto tracking. And you do need to set up, there's a whole guide that Empire Tech did, but basically you just need to set up a preset one. And that way the camera always knows where to return. That's kind of like your monitoring area. And then you'll just draw a squares. I'll show you here in a second. But the PTZ functions, there's the preset one, there's the image adjustments, all your stuff. Pretty simple to do. I did find... There's another feature that it has it locked out where I couldn't look up as high as I wanted to, but I was able to figure out how to do that. And it's in the settings. We'll go through some of that. You can go through here, the zoom, change the speed, etc. Sometimes I will tell you the speed is just too fast for the GUI. It's it, it just it zooms around way too much. You can see here. Yeah, I just did a full 360 by holding the mouse down for a second or two but that's on max speed. Then there's even some other max speed adjustments that you can do for this. I think it's like three speeds adjustments. So lots of speed adjustment stuff to make everybody happy, right? So let's take a look at the bench. Let's just, let's see if we can zoom in on this bench. It's across the street here. Yeah, 
that's pretty nuts. I, I bet you if there was someone sitting on that bench and someone that could read lips, they would have no problem picking out what that person was saying. So there's definitely a lot of Zoom, way more than you probably ever need. I mean, look how far we're zooming back out. That's pretty cool. So one thing for the auto tracking, if you need to hit the home key up here, and then it's under the AI section. And then you'll get the, I don't do the face detection, but I think that was saying there was too much for it. You'd turn on the IVS and then you hit next and then you hit the IVS. And then that's where you were setting the intrusion, the tripwire. Now the guide from Empire Tech, they tell you to set the tripwire and I just set the whole square and just said, hey, if I see a person in this square that it just says right here, I believe it's talking about a pier or it crosses, it was seems to work for the most part. I did throw in the trip wire just to see how I get different events. I haven't noticed that. And it's basically just they tell you to scribble a bunch of lines and seeing if, you know, someone crosses one of those lines to go ahead and trigger and track them. But I think I've found that the intrusion thing works too. Something you just really got to play with in your area. And how are you going to add it and everything? It's pretty simple what you do. Just throw the stuff in here. I did crank it up to the tracking duration at 300 here. And it just has no issue with that. Now you can see when I set it on intrusion. I think sometimes it was showing that there's a, it puts a square on a vehicle, but I do have the vehicles turned off here. So it's picking out her, maybe it, the bigger person or the, doesn't like how tall he is. I don't know. I don't judge. So it's pretty cool that it puts the red right on them and shows like I'm you can see I'm I'm not tracking them by hand or anything I'm not clicking anything uh that's my mouse sitting there so pretty cool that it just automatically tracks people and zooms in on them I'm just curious to see if it'll jump to the guy once it loses her yeah if you get bored you know I, I this is entertaining for me even when I'm re recording this um uh, no it went to the uh don't don't stop in the mailbox Ah, okay. It picked out on the mailbox. I, I have seen it track past this during the day. So maybe it's just something with the night. So setting it to night mode, it's actually not that bad. Um, you do get the IR blowout on especially reflective things like license plates. If you, so if you did want to use this for LPR or something like that, you would need to adjust the shutter speed. But it's probably kind of a waste to do this expensive of a camera for LPR definitely get you something that's probably stationary um it's not too bad for with the IR I might actually leave this on IR mode it has a little better picture quality at night um because of that larger sensor and then you doing the IR is just more designed for that and actually not a bad thing to do um, might actually track things a lot better. So I did want to run through some day shots just to show some of the zoom capabilities. Now do keep in mind that this is showing the web GUI. So it's kind of down resed already. And then I'm recording the web GUI. So it's not the direct, you know, video stream here. So you're going to see a drop in quality, but still we'll be able to see the crazy zoom this has. I'll try to pull in some other footage that in between this that records and just to kind of show you the full frame video of this. So zoom in, let's zoom in all the way to the pop -a lock truck we'll pick on. It's just got a bunch of text on it, various sizes, so it works out great. All the way and let it do its focus thing. And for the most part, it does pretty well. You can see some of the smaller text and some of the darker areas, it will adjust the iris so then you can go around and look at different things. Probably more zoom, like I've said, than you really ever need. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess they're sitting in the shed. I'm gonna back out. Nothing else needs to be said there. So, um, yeah, so of course you didn't know this, this is going on there. 
and uh, maybe they're just playing on their phones. So that's kind of a unscripted, unbiased review of this mini PTZ. I know it's not really a mini PTZ, but it's definitely mini compared to some of the other 25X Zoom speed domes that go stupid fast and track people. So awesome, they put this in such a small package. I've really been excited about this camera and love this thing and use the freaking hell out of it. Is it worth the price of roundabout, say $400? Absolutely, I'm gonna say I would definitely buy this thing again. I don't have a spot for a second one, so no, I'm not buying a second one, but yeah, it's an awesome camera if you have the location and you don't have a wall mount, you know, option. You just got the under eaves. It's a pretty cool camera. So I'll leave all the links down below for you to pick up one. Um, I definitely can't say enough about Empire Tech support. I know he's helped out several people that have had issues. And whether it be minor issues or major issues, he always stands behind his product. And yeah, he's not paying me to say any of this. So I definitely appreciate everyone for watching. The Patreon subscribers, YouTube members definitely couldn't buy cool products and projects to bring to the channel all the time without you. So, yep, you know the drill. Press all them buttons and y'all take care. Pretty much this sucker is decently sized, but the awesome part is I can stick it under a soffit without any special, you know, wall mounts or whatnot because the way this thing goes on, is there's just, you just mount this plate up on the soffit or wall or whatever it may be and then there's these screws that are in the top like so and then that just locks and that just locks in and then you run this screw in if you can see right there you run the screw in and that locks it from twisting and coming off and yeah, it can be a pain to run that screw in, but hey, I guess it would take a long time for someone to take the camera down. So I can fully understand that. The way it does, it turns the whole housing, the black part, this stays, you know, stationary. And there is like a little fan inside. I don't know if you can see down in that neck right there to keep things cool. And it does have even a temperature sensor that you could actually put on the screen if you want, which is pretty neat. Now, the cool thing about this is the auto tracking. And yeah, we'll get to that in some of the videos. This thing is nuts. And for you know the price, it definitely should be. And well, it is. Now, you do get the power over Ethernet on there. And you, if you want to power it through 12 volt DC, you can do there. You get all these audio inputs and you can do power there's and then you get the alarm wires now i'm not using any of these so i'm just going to leave those up in the soffit not worry about them i'm just using the power over ethernet for this camera now if you want to look at size comparisons your regular turret so it is a good significant difference on how far it sticks down so do keep that in mind on your distance and where you're mounting it at because you can see as you can see it's a lot different but um yeah this one is just a simple stationary camera and doesn't do a whole lot so this is pretty cool that they actually do call this a mini ptz believe it or not but damn it works well. I've been messing with it in a few test places and I'm excited to get it mounted up on the corner and really mess with it some more. Now they do have a spot for a micro SD card in there. I haven't taken this fully apart. I'm not using the micro SD card on the camera itself because I'm recording using you know RTSP and OnVIF and the whole thing. You can use it with Blue Iris or Frigate or whatever since it is that Daiwa style of things where you can you know just record and the codecs work.